What is happening is that a young lady in this community who lost her son to murder uh, has taken the initiative to spearhead uh, some meetings and some gatherings uh, to try to bring to the forefront uh, and, and make people aware in this community that so many people over the past years have died mysteriously, uh, either by being shot, uh, cut, burned up, or whatever the case might have been. And yet, there are so many of them, uh, murders who have not, that have not been solved. Before I bring up the family according to the program in this city, I ask that you listen with a serious heart because it could have very well been in of us. We could have been in any places. So take in consideration the pain. The Bible says the race ain't given to the swiftness, nor the strongest, but unto him that endure to the end. How long is their endurance? But they're still in the race. And, 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 and one more thing before I bring it up. This Confederate flag thing. Do your history. It holds no place. It serves no place. But the museum yes. ought to have been buried back in the 1800s. Now, don't, you, you might be connected to some of them folks, but your mentality ought to be different from their mentality. Because my Bible tells me that God created man in his own image, and some Bibles his own likeness. We're created equal. If I cut you, you're going to bleed. You cut me, I'm going to bleed. God does not have no respectable person. So who are you to tell me I'm nothing? When my Bible tells me I'm a royal priesthood, I am a peculiar people. I'm somebody. And I'm going to stand for who I am. Because if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. And it's time out for us falling for anything. It's time out for the stuff being pushed up under the rug. Yeah. It's time out cutting them underground heels. Yeah. It's time that we stand up and take a stand. Yes. You got to stand up, step up, and speak up. Because yeah. right. you got these parents that the lost their love for, they cannot embrace no more. They can't see their grandchildren, future grandchildren no more. They can't hear the voices no more. Because somebody decided, I'm going to play God and take their lives. So I take my hat off to these mothers that's going through this pain. I can't say exactly how they feel because I got all mine. But I can very much tell you that they're going through it every day. Trust me on that. There's an emptiness and there's a void. Every day is a struggle. So I ask, as they come forth, bear in mind what they're going through. And the very purpose of this engagement this evening. First, I'm going to have Miss Am Ms. Amos. Give a hand. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lucy Amos. This picture is a picture of my son, whom I lost December 24th of 08. I also lost a grandbaby three days after we buried my son. I also, a week later from my son's death, went to New Orleans, Louisiana for a two-year-old baby's funeral. Father cut the baby's throat. Yes, I've been through a lot and I suffer, but I'm gonna stand strong today. 
I'm asking anyone out here to look at my son. If you have any information, please come forward. I'm hurting and I need answers. Please help me. It ain't that you's a snitch. Blair Amos. Blair Amos. Blair Amos. Anybody know her? And my clarion. Blair died Christmas Day of 08. <laughs> see some, say some. That don't make you being a snitch. That cold of silence, you can get rid of that. Amen. Because if it hit your mom or your daddy, you want somebody to tell you something. Oh, yeah. So we can forget that. These are families that are hurting, that's going through. Next we have uh, uh, Miss Dukes. Let's give a hand as she comes. I am the mother of Roger Johnson. This is my son, Peter, Roger Jermaine Johnson. My son died. He died May 2011. I know there's someone out there that knows what happened to my son. There's too much silence that's going on. The people in the neighborhood know you very well. But no one wants to step up and tell the truth and tell what they really know about what happened to Roger Jermaine Johnson. I've had some things going on in my life, and it has not been very pleasant. I have a nine-year-old grandson who is Roger Johnson's only son sitting over there. This kid lost his father when he was only five years old. He struggled with this. He have an autism problem as well. But I thank God that I do have a part of my son. Yes. That yes. is not bad yes. for me to look at yes. and to love yes. and to chat. I thank God for blessing me to become to be strong. It used to be I couldn't even pick up the picture and say something or go to his grave or go to his memorial. But God has brought me a mighty, mighty memorial. And I thank God for that because I was able to reach out to help some other mothers who have lost their child as well. And without God, I don't know where I'll be. And I just want to say, Sodom is a dead case. We don't want this to happen to none of you out there. The pain that I feel, I don't wish it on my worst enemy. This is a pain that you'll never ever get over with. I have to live with this the rest of my life. This kid has to live with his father being gone the rest of his life. Who he'll never see play football or know what he's doing. And I just ask, if anyone have any information at all, come up, step forward, and tell what you know about Roger Jermaine Johnson. If any of your family member may know something and they tell you, tell what you know. Because silence is a bad thing to hold back when you know information that will help another family to close the hurt to their heart, which it will give them some closer to what happened to the child. I have got some information in my case that I have a, someone have came forward on my case and said what they saw, but I need another one. I have got a little close on this, and I'm asking God continue to bring it on out, yes. because I know God got all power in his hands, yes. and I know he said give him all my words and care, and I'm giving all my words and care for him, and I'm standing strong, yes. but I'm just hurt with a big hole in my heart. Thank you. This has started my journey, praise God. Certain things 
have to happen for certain things to happen. I am the president of Pain, Parents Against Injustice and Negligence. We are a support group who support parents who have laws or some of the daughter due to violence. It's not easy losing a child. No parent should have to bury their child, especially through a homicide. Every day, you think about your child. Some have children that's left behind and some don't. I say, but God, I thank God. I tell people all the time, my middle name is thank God because I thank God so much because I'm the faith, the face of hope. Yes. Yeah. My son, Killer, is spending life in prison. And a lot of people don't get that. So that's why we go out in the streets of Pensacola with signs, kill the cold, tell the truth. Because somebody seen something. Somebody knows something. And, and time after time, they say, what if this was your child? What if this was your brother? What if this was your, your sister? Somebody knows something. Yes. That's right. Kill the cold, tell the truth. My heart goes out to all the, the, the mothers here, and I pray for them daily. And I thank God for people like y'all supporting this cause. Nobody knows like we know. I know the pain. Praise God. Praise God. Praise Him. Kill the cold, tell the truth. Yes. God bless you. myself, two-year-old grandson, December 17, 2011, and my baby son, he was 23, just this year, he was shot, and he was a conscious injury, spirit of the 2015, and it's a hard journey for me to go. When I buried my grandson, I buried my mama with him. Back a week later, and I am in so much of pain and hurt. But they did get the killers of my grandson. They got they doing mandatory life, and one was his close friend who came back to the scene of the crime and from the Baptist Sleep Center, holding my daughter, came to the candlelight vigil, and everything. So sometimes we got to be aware of the ones we bring into our hearts and our homes, because they are, they are dangerous too. Enemies don't come from a distance, they come close. They, that's why they say beware of your enemies. My son was coming from his girlfriend's house, January the 19th. The day before, he came to my house, I told my lover to be careful, he was 23. He drove himself to Circle K after he got shot on W, Massachusetts. Now, I buried him with my mom and my grandson. But God be the glory. My grandson has a three-year-old daughter. He's never seen her, she's never seen him. My son has a three-year-old daughter and a one-year-old daughter. And the lady's having his child soon. But it is so hard. And I, my heart goes out to the parents, friends who have lost people to things that senseless. God is good, but God didn't do this. Evil did this. So that's why we got to stop and take a look around and everything. They say smiling faces, beware. You know, start looking in a person's eyes, even if they smiling and see how the death in their eyes look. You know, and my daughter, she's going through changes also. You know, I can't help her, and she can't help me because both of us are crying. And I don't know what to say to her, and she don't know what to say to me. We just embrace her. I don't even let her see me crying. You know, and they say it. You know, I, what can I say to her? What can she say to me? We just dip our hands up to God. 
and they asked him to give us the strength. And right now, my strength is weak. Very weak. I'm torn up on the inside. When I go to the graveyard now, I can go three graves and go. And it's sad. My mama gives a flourishing and beautiful life. She's good. And everybody out here, I thank you all for coming. This is my first time, but I promise Cindy she's been on, on my heart and on my mind. She's a good killer, and I thank God for her, yeah. for Lisa and the rest of them, who the program. You, you know what I'm talking about. I love you all. And Reverend Matthews, I came because of you. God be good. Thank you all. My name is Cindy Martin, and my son's name is Matthew Shelby Cox. My son was killed by an armed robber on July 28, 2012. He was sitting outside his house, um, outside the house, and a guy came up behind him and put a gun to his head and robbed him. When my son got enough strength to get up off the ground, he ran into the house. He shut the door, and the guy shot through the door and shot him in his heart. From that time, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I went from merely being a mother to a son, from being a cosmetologist, a sister to a sister, a sister to my brother, to just being a heartbroken mother. Um, but there's a name for a child that have lost a parent, which is an orphan, a mother that have lost a husband, which is a widow. There's no name for a mother who has lost a child. But I want to say the reason why we're here, we're trying to bring awareness to what's going on in Pensacola. Because a lot of people don't know about these stories and what's going on. And it's a lot of people that aren't here today. Either they didn't hear about it, I didn't have time to try to um, notify them. We're still working on this. This won't be the first day. You know, we'll probably be having awareness there at least once a month. We're going to try to get out and get the word out to some of these families about the cold cases. Um, like Ms. Rose was saying, somebody came forth and positively identified who killed her son. At that time, the, the girl, she was young, probably 14 or 15, she didn't know who to tell. But now she came uh, of age where she was able to come forth and tell. But I want to say, um, I really, three people, I wish they could be here, their parents, but there's three first cousins that got killed, Delarian, McCorvey, Tori Jones and Tyler McCaskill. I just want y'all to send our special prayer for the family because they are all first cousins and they're not dealing with that too well. They're supposed to be here today. And also, Sharanda Shear, her son was murdered about four months ago. Um, he was shot in the head and he set the crowd on fire. And he was burned beyond recognition. And so it was going to be hard for her to be here today. So I want y'all to send a special prayer. They don't know who did it. It is a cold case. And there are many, many, many cold cases that uh, we haven't gotten together yet. So, um, also, I want to recognize, and I can't, I apologize because so many people that are instrumental, I can't possibly name everybody. But just know that everybody is appreciated. But I want to um, also let you know it's a human problem and a health problem. And it's not just a black problem or a white problem. Because when I was looking through the missing person list, we got eight white females missing. We got three black males missing. And so I just want you guys, uh, I'd like to see if we got a, a mixed crowd here. And that's what we want because it's not only a black issue, it's a white issue. I ask y'all just pray. Pray my strength for the Lord. Thank Amen. you. Let's give them mothers a hand clap of praise. That we get behind you. And we ain't just talking about it, we want to be about it. Because it's not going to stop. It's an ongoing thing until you nip it in the book. Until we come together and say enough is enough. And stand for something. So many cases is 
unsolved in this city. So many cases is pushed up under the rug. That's right. So many cases are so cold, they don't even think about looking at them. It's been so long. But they got relatives that live in and people that care. That's why we're here today. Because we care. I'm not related to none of you. But in spirit, I am. Yes, sir. Because we are a child of God. That's right. That's right. That's right. 